Okay, the next question is from Taylene. Taylene, I'm really sorry, it might be Tarlene. I've been friends with you for ages on Facebook. I don't know how to pronounce your name. This is the amazing things about, uh, about online friendships. So, uh, sorry about that if I, if I got it wrong. Um, you asked, uh, well, first question was, what is my favourite Taylor Swift song? Um, I really hope I don't disappoint you here to say that I'm, I'm more of a Metallica fan. But I do quite like Taylor Swift. In fact, I'm going to see her uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks um, at the BBC Big Weekender, which is here in Norwich. Um, so I'll, I will be seeing uh, Taylor Swift there, and uh, that'd be pretty cool. Um, so I, I couldn't even tell you one of her songs. There was one. There was one on the radio about breaking up. I'll never. We'll never. We will never, never, never get back together. That one. That's. I'll say that one because that's the only one I can think of. I'm not dissing anymore. And you also asked, what do I think about all uh, the original characters that have come out of the, of the Furnace universe? I touched on this earlier on. It's one of the most amazing things. You know, I honestly think that when you write a book series, that's your job done. You write, you, write the, you write the series, you create the world, you create some of the characters in that world, you create some of the locations in that world, but that world exists now. It exists in the public. Anyone can and should be able to write stories based in that world, because how can it be a bad thing to see that world grow? I know some authors are a bit territorial about their worlds, you know, they don't want anyone to write it or add anything. I think it's such a waste, because I think, you know, I think if you open up your world for anyone to, to join, anyone to explore, you come up with stories that you could never have imagined. And some of the stories I've read online about Alex and Donovan and Z and Simon and all the other characters in Infernus and the Warden, They've blown me away. Some of them are better than what I could have come up with. And I, I just think that that's amazing to see this tiny seed of a world that you create when you, when you write a book blossom into a million different stories that will live on forever. And I think this is amazing. So any of you, if you ever want to do anything with the Furnace World, just do it because I would love to see it. Love your fan art. Always post fan art on, on the lockdown page. I love the fanfic. It just uh, is brilliant. Um, and absolutely anything uh, that's created uh, in the Furnace world, I love to see it. So yeah, thanks guys. I just want to say thanks for taking the time to, to get to know the world like that. Um, yeah, it's amazing. And this one's from Noah Berta Savage. Again, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Um, do I take emotions that I had when I was younger and use them in the characters? Yes, great question. Yes, of course I do. I think all writers do. I think this is, this is the thing about writing. I think this is the amazing thing about writing and why anyone can be a writer. Nobody in the world has lived the same life as you. Nobody in the world has experienced emotions in the same way as you. So nobody in the world, in the whole history of the world, in the whole future of the world, could ever write the same book as you. I think this is why plagiarism is, is so rare, because only you can write the book that's in your head. And the reason for that is that you put your emotions in it. You put your experiences in it. Maybe not your real life experiences, but those emotional experiences. We've all got this emotional knowledge in our head that's based up on, on all the experiences we've had in our lives. Nobody else has got that same kind of emotional DNA. So nobody else could write about things in the same way as you. Um, so yeah, use those experiences. And loads of you have asked, I think McKinley Zoelna, uh, I was gonna come on to your question next, but I'm gonna answer it now. Um, you asked, you know, about about me as a teenager and how that fed into the book as well. So yeah, I used myself as a teenager. I, I remembered those experiences, all the things I went through, all the moral dilemmas and uh, all those moments where I absolutely hated myself uh, for the person that I was becoming and all the moments that it felt really exciting and just drove them into the story, drove them into this character of Alex that I created. And yeah, I, I honestly think that those experience and those, uh, those emotions are what made the series so compelling. Hopefully it's compelling, hopefully it's scary, hopefully it's exciting because I use so much of my, my own life, my own experiences in the story. Obviously not real life experiences, like I say, just those emotional ones, just those memories. So yeah, when you're writing, again, think back to when you were younger. Think back to the, the really emotional times you've had in your life and see what happens, you know, see where it leads you, uh, and certainly see what it does to, to make your characters just leap out of the page. Great question. And Maria Vasileva asks, who was my most loved character in Furnace, and who was the character I most hated? That's a great question. Um, it's tough, it's tough to pick the most loved one. Alex obviously very close to me, but too close for me to say that I loved him the most. 
it would have to be Donovan, I think, um, or Z, I don't know, is it, like I said, because everyone was so close in that book. Donovan was like the big brother I never had. Uh, you know, I'm the oldest of, of four, never had a big brother to look after me. Donovan was that big brother. Donovan was the guy that, you know, I really wanted to look after me. He obviously just came in at exactly the right moment to look after Alex. Um, so Donovan has to be one of my most loved characters. But Z, I love Z. I think, I just, I can't imagine the story without Z. There's no way that Alex would have got anywhere without Z. He certainly never would have come out of that story, you know, the way he did without Z. Z is like my best friend, um, even now, even though he never actually existed, Z is like my best friend. Um, so I guess if it came to like a big best friend punch up between Donovan and Z, I'd have to go for Z. I love you Z. And while we're talking about Z, uh, Saidu asks, why did I call Z, Z? Uh, I have answered this question before on another vlog, but I'll just, I'll, I'll let you know again. Um, Z in the original draft of Furnace was called Z, because obviously over here in the UK, we don't say Z in the alphabet, we say Z. And Z's whole story is that he was, you know, he was the last child and his parents didn't want any more, so they named him after the last letter in the alphabet. Um, so he, became, he was Z. Uh, and then when I sent the story off, everyone was like, oh, well, you know, Z, Z, Z. Every time Zed spoke, it was Zed said, and it was starting to sound like a Doctor's Use book. So, in the end, we decided to switch it to C. Uh, works better in America, and to be honest, it fits his personality. And I can't even imagine him as a Zed now. Zed? Who's that? Z. It will always be Z in my heart. But yes, that is why. And the next question, brilliant question, uh, from Summer Anastasia Green. Hey, Summer. How has writing the series, creating the characters, exploring the story, affected me as a person, well, I can honestly say that it's changed my life in a million different ways. I haven't got time to tell you how many different, uh, different ways it's changed my life. The first is that it probably saved my life. When I was writing the series, I was going through a very dark time um, in my life and, uh, and, you know, I always kind of, um, always had this idea that Alex was in this horrible prison, this, this place that he couldn't escape from, this dark place. And I thought, you know, if Alex never gets out of this prison. I will never get past this point in my life. So when I wrote Lockdown, it's why I wrote Lockdown in three weeks, because I threw us both in there. I was kind of the ghost in Alex's cell, uh, living down there with him. I wasn't in the story, but I was part of the story. And I wanted us both to escape. I wanted us both to take that breath of fresh air and know that things were gonna be okay. So I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote. Obviously I won't say what happens at the end of the first book, just for those of you that haven't read it, but I wanted to find out. I wanted to, I wanted to escape. Um, and we got through that process. We kind of helped each other out of that situation. And afterwards, you know, I thought if, if Alex can go through that, if I can go through that, I can get through anything. So in, in some way, it did kind of save my life. But it's also changed my life as, you know, in, in just a, a more material sense as well. You know, I, uh, Furnace is what enabled me to do what I love all of the time, uh, to write stories. I love writing. I've wanted to do it since I was a kid, for as long as I can remember. And, 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 and Furnace, the fact that so many of you guys have, have read the books and enjoyed the books, has let me do what I love, which is tell stories. It's completely changed my life. It's also changed my personality. I mean, I guess I'm more of a hopeful person now. I'm more willing to do things that scare me now. Um, one of the weird things about writing Furnace was that while I was writing it, I spent my life acting like I was inside a prison. It wasn't even a conscious thing. It was just like, because I felt so overwhelmed by this horrible prison, by all the people in it, I kind of shrank away. You know, I, I used to eat my dinner like this. I'm like, come on, dare, who, who dare steal my dinner? Um, forgetting that, you know, none, none of my family were going to kind of attack me uh, just to get a baked potato. Um, and so, yeah, so I, 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 for a long time, I, I kind of, I, I was walking through the streets thinking someone's going to attack me, someone's going to attack me. So it did kind of change my personality, but I think it made, made me braver writing this series. I think it made me more compassionate. I think it, I think it changed me in a million different ways. Um, it's such a weird process. Like I said before, you live someone else's life. You know, I lived Alex's life. When I was writing The Fury, I, I lived the lives of those characters. It changes you as a person. They say that when you read, it, you, you live a thousand lives. When you write, you live a thousand lives too, or however many lives you write about. You have those experiences, you have those encounters. You know, when I was writing Fairness, you know, I don't remember anything that happened to me in my life when I was writing Fairness, but I remember every sight inside that prison, every smell, uh, everything, uh, every touch, um, everything that happened inside that prison feels more real to me 
than my own life. So I lived that life, I was there. So how can you not learn something about yourself from those experiences? Again, this is another reason why write. I think it's an, an amazing, uh, incredible, privileged position that anyone, anyone can be a writer, anyone can do this. Go into your stories and, and live those lives. You come out as a better, better informed, better prepared, just better person. Um, it's, in, it's incredible really. I just wish it had made me a little bit thinner as well. The next one is from Amy McKenzie, or should I say Amy McKenzie? Uh, yes, you are still my number one Scottish fan, thank you. Um, that wasn't your only question, no, the other question was am I going to come up to Scotland again and do some workshops? Yes, I would love to. I am waiting, well, I think because I haven't had a book out for a couple of years, uh, I haven't been invited up to the Edinburgh Book Festival, uh, but hopefully, uh, I've got a new book, I'll come on to that in a minute, coming out uh, at the end of this year, so hopefully I'll be at the Edinburgh Book Festival next year. If you're watching, guys, invite me back, please. Um, I love Edinburgh, I think it's an amazing festival. Uh, if not, I will try and organise something else, uh, come up and see you guys. Uh, in Scotland, I love Scotland. I, I'm Scottish, you know. All my family is Scottish. You know, why, why else would I be called Gordon? Um, uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I will definitely come up and, and see you guys in Scotland too. That uh, brings me on to another question, very similar from Elise. Hey, Elise. Um, is there anywhere I'd like to tour that I haven't toured already to do events? Uh, yes, like the whole world. I mean, I, I'm so lucky to be able to tour as part of my job. It's one of my favourite things about writing is getting to travel and I would love to visit uh, some more places. I, there's so many more places in America that I would like to go. I'd love to do a tour of the South, um, go and see Georgia. I've got a lot of fans in Georgia. I would love to come over to Georgia and see you guys. Um, and there's uh, just a million places in America. The battery died, <coughs> but now I'm back. Um, so yeah, I can't even remember what I was talking about. Visiting places, I think. Um, yeah, I, I would love to uh, visit anywhere. So. I should be back over to America twice a year, as usually, I try and get over at least twice a year to different places. If you want me to come to a, a bookstore near you, come to your school, um, anything like that, then just email me, get your teachers to email me, your librarians to email me, and we will work something out. But yeah, I love to travel, so this is awesome. In fact, it's only very recently that I love to travel. Uh, I used to be terrified of flying. I did say I was scared of everything. Uh, I actually missed my sister's wedding because I was too scared of flying. Sorry, Kate. Um, but she's divorced now, so it's all cool. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, it's only very recently that I've, I've, I've worked out how to actually get on a plane uh, without crying. Um, but now that I can, I can go anywhere. So yeah, love to travel. One of the best parts of the job. So Kendall, hey Kendall, you asked, uh, what is my favourite book series that I've read recently? Um, I've read a few this year that I've really enjoyed. Rotten Ruin, Jonathan Mabry, I think has been a fantastic series. I'm only uh, just starting the second one, but I absolutely love it. Zombies, it kicks ass, it's fantastic. I love Jonathan Mabry anyway. Um, great hero of mine, he writes some fantastic books. Um, so I read that, uh, Darren Chan, Zombie, Darren Chan, another hero of mine. Um, Zombie is a fantastic series. If you haven't read it, read it, it's brilliant. I don't like it as much as uh, Sec de Freak, but then Sec de Freak is one of my all time favorite series of all time, ever, in all time. So um, it's hard to beat. Uh, I read that. My friend Tim Clare, he's just published a book called The Honours, which is amazing. Uh, read that, absolutely loved it. Um, well done, Tim. Superb piece of writing, great story, great main character. Absolutely loved that. And what else have I read this year? Oh, oh yeah, Shutter by Courtney Alameda. I finished that, there was a review of that on my blog. Um, absolutely, oh, that was the cat, uh, that sound there. Um, absolutely loved that book. Again, just a fantastic mix of horror and action. Just beautifully beautifully done could not put it down scariest book i've read this year is probably one of the scariest books i've ever read in my life adam neville's uh i forgot what it's called oh yeah no one gets out alive that book gave me nightmares like no other book in history excuse me i had a cornetto while i was waiting for the battery to recharge um absolutely brilliant absolutely loved it uh, just Terrifying. It was one of the few books that's actually provoked like a physical reaction in me. Would definitely recommend that. No one gets out alive. I'd recommend all these books. Uh, we're really lucky with the books that I've read this year. Um, so yeah, great, great books. Great question. Thank you. And we'll finish with one more question. Uh, a couple of you asked this. A few of you actually asked this. Can I reveal any more information about my new book series? Well, yes, I can. So guys, I would like to introduce you to the Devil's Engine. Oh. Oh. Uh, 
Um, I'm so thrilled to finally get a copy of this. I'm really excited about this series. This series uh, is just fun. It's fun and it's action packed and it's scary. Uh, it's, it's me trying to recreate what I did in Furnace. Um, that same pace, that same sense of action, that same sense of danger and heroism. I I'm really excited about it. Um, I, the first book is called Hellraisers. It is out in December in the States. I'm not sure of the UK release date yet, but I will let you know. Uh, I'm going to read you the back of the book just to give you a flavour. <coughs> From the author of the Escape from Furnace series. Uh, an explosive new horror trilogy about an ordinary team and a life-changing bargain. There is a machine from the darkest parts of history, concealed in an impossible location, that can make any wish come true. And the only price you have to pay is your soul. Known as the Devil's Engine, this device powers an invisible, centuries-old war between good and evil that will decide the fate of every living thing on Earth. When a 16-year-old asthmatic kid named Marlo Green finds himself trapped in a demonic firefight in the middle of his Staten Island neighborhood, he discovers a squad of secret soldiers dedicated to battling the legions of the Devil himself. Faced with monstrous apparitions, ancient weaponry, and a lot worse, Marlowe submits to a hellish deal that enables him to join the battle if it doesn't kill him first. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that is the, that is the, um, the pitch. Uh, it's a take on the Faustian legend about what would happen if you could sell your soul to the devil. Uh, only I've turned it, hopefully, into a really exciting, really kick-ass action story. So yeah, really excited about this. I will tell you some more information as soon as I get it. I really hope you guys like it. I wrote this book for you guys. I wanted to do something similar to, the, uh, to what I did in Furnace. I wanted you to be thrilled and excited and scared uh, all at the same time. Thank you very much for watching this. I'm sorry if I didn't get around to answering your question. I will try and do a Q&A video every six weeks every two months something like that uh, so any more questions that you have uh, ask me uh, on Facebook on the lockdown page or on my personal page ask me on YouTube just comment them below and I'll find them or on Twitter anything you like send me some more questions I will do my best to answer them all in the next video uh, but yeah awesome questions guys thank you very much see ya hey Mitch the dogs did a cameo in the last video do you want to do anything I'm tired how about you, Grub? You want to do anything on the video? I'm tired too. Mitch, last chance. Oh, cats are so boring. Shut up.